Okay, so now we're going to do factoring quadratic polynomials. And what I want you to think about factoring is it's the backwards of multiplying, or it undoes multiplying. And um, if, you if you want an example, so if I thought about um, um, 4, right? And I thought about, okay, I need this number 4, and I wanted to factor 4. What are all the factors of 4? So you're thinking what times what gives me 4. So I'm thinking 1 times 4 gives me 4, and so does 2 times 2. So these are the factors of 4. So if I wanted to factor 4, I could either go 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. So when we're thinking about factoring, we want it something times something. Quadratic means it's squared, and that's the highest power you see. This is a squared, and this is a invisible one right here. So the quadratic refers to the squared piece. So let's draw an arrow there. So squared means quadratic, and poly means many. Polynomial means many terms, one, two, three. So when it's telling you to factor a quadratic polynomial, they want you to do something times something. So this is the answer is going to look like something times something. A quadratic means that you're going to see squared in the problem. Polynomial means the problem has one, two, three, many terms. And so um, in my last video, I did multiplying polynomials. So now I'm going to undo multiplying. And so now I want to think about undoing x squared plus 6x plus 9. So it's almost like I want to go kind of like backwards. Instead of starting with this information that goes here and here and outside the box, if you remember the box, you know, we were going to do the box. Um, now we were going to, now we're going to look at the information and we're going to start in here with all the tiles and all the information in the box. So let's just draw my box because I keep talking about it and I need to draw it so that we're, that's, you know, that's our goal is to get to this place, like if I could draw course, if we can get to this place where we can factor, meaning undoing this here, so it's something times something. And of course, if you wanted to check your answer, all you had to do is multiply this binomial or whatever times this binomial to make sure that you got the problem, just like, you know, um, multiplication and division. You know, I know that one, uh, 2 times 2 is 4. And I can check that because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And um, so I wanted to get my pieces out. So here's x squared. And if you remember from before, x squared is this nice blue piece right here. Right? And then if you uh, want to look at um, 6x, and because he's positive, I'm going to grab my green tiles here. So 1, and I don't know, 1, 2... Three, four, five, six. So I have these six tiles here. I'm going to spread them out just a little bit so it makes, so you guys can all see my different pieces. Right? Okay. So six X's and then plus nine little guys. So I need nine of these little pieces here. So one, two, three, four. There's some pieces there. Um, five, six. Um, seven, eight, and last one, nine. Okay, so what I want to do is, if you remember, this was the the area of that rectangle. And so um, I'm going to try to arrange these pieces into a rectangle. And um, think about what you, how would you would arrange these pieces if they were sitting right in front of you. Most of my students tend to do this. They take all their pieces. Let me give some spacing here so that you guys can see the pieces. Um, they take all of my pieces and they start lining them up this way. They line them up this way, which is good because, you know, look, we're forming a rectangle. And they get all excited because they're, look, yay, we have a rectangle, right? And then you forget, oh, I have all these pieces right here. So maybe it's not like this. If you remember from the multiplying example, we had some pieces here, but we also had some pieces here. So let me get some of these guys and see if we can do that. All right, so I need a total of six. Um, so that's uh, that's too many. That's seven. So let me move him away. 
And so if I arranged all these pieces, this is six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? And I have six rectangles. So how many are going to go down here? So let's see how many I go. One, two, three, four. Oh, no. You see, I have the six rectangles, but I have four pieces left over because I only used five of them. And you can clearly see I need nine of them. So maybe, hmm, maybe I need to take another one away from here. And let me grab this one. Um, another one. Oops. Let me grab another one of these. Would that do the trick? Oh, we have one left over here, so let's pull them over here. And we got this guy, and this guy, and this guy. And look, we're a little bit better because we only have one left over. But, yep, you guessed it. We're going to do it one more time. So if we take one away there, I count one, two, three, four, five. I really want six. So I need another one of these. So um, put this here, put this here. And we got this guy here. So we got a total of six X's and nine right here. And that's perfect because that's exactly what we have. Let's check. This is X squared. This is X squared. We have six X's. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we need nine little pieces. Nine little pieces. Okay. Um, so we arranged it in a rectangle. And now I'm going to bring all these pieces inside here just like we did for multiplying polynomials so imagine me transposing this box right here right and then I'm gonna take all these pieces and put them in here except for now I'm just gonna write it so I don't need these anymore so let me get them out of here so I don't have to look at them anymore oops okay so I'm gonna start writing some stuff in um, I, again, we're going backwards of what we did before, so, um, we're going to go with x squared in here, because that's what we have. How many do we have here? Good. So now what are we going to write here? We're not just going to write a 3, because see, this is not 3. 3 looks like that, 1, 2, 3. This is called 3x, because we have 3x's, 3x. And over here, we have 1, 2, 3 again. That's right, we got to write 3x. Some people feel more comfortable about writing a plus right here, just so they remember it's positive. I'm okay with just writing 3x. Down here, we have 9. And because these are all 1s, we can write 9. Okay, so now that we've transferred it all there, we're, I'm going to go back and forth between these two. Um, so here, what we want to think about is some, something's going to go out here that I can multiply this by to get this. And I'm going to multiply this by to get this. So you're looking for really the greatest common factor of x squared and 3x. So another way to put it is what do you see in both x squared and 3x? And hopefully you said x. Now x goes in both and I can prove it to you because x times something gives me x squared and x times something else gives me 3x. Alright, and then from here all I do is play like who's missing. So x times what gives me x squared. That's right, it's x. And x times what gives me 3x. And you're right, it's 3. And I'm going to put a plus here because that 3 is plus, and I don't want to confuse it with x times 3 because if I didn't put a plus here, it would be x times 3. So I'm writing x plus 3. Now let me just make sure. I'm going to distribute this x over here and here to make sure that I get this piece right here and right here. So is x times x really x squared? And is x times 3 really 3x? And the answer is yes. And, it, and, then, and then we do the same thing down here to make sure this and this match. So what is x times what gives me 3x? And it's 3. And again, I'm going to write that plus right there because I need to know that it's x plus 3. So what's x times 3? It's 3x. And is 3 times 3 really 9? 
And the answer is yes. And so I just want to take a moment to make sure that we have all this information in our head. So the first thing I did is I arranged my tiles and try to make a rectangle. Now the rectangle couldn't have any leftover pieces, otherwise we wouldn't be factoring x squared plus 6x plus 9. So I started with all my rectangles here in, a, in like in a row, and then I noticed I had too many little yellow pieces left over. So what I started doing is I started moving some guys over here, and slowly I built this rectangle that was a rectangle. And, um, okay, so now what I did is I took all my pieces and I transferred it over here. Again, the hardest part is going to be this part. You're going to ask yourself, what's the greatest common factor here? Now, I could have done it for any row. For some reason, I just always start with this. So the greatest common factor between x squared and 3x is x. Because you, I don't know if you heard me, but I was trying to make it very obvious that it was x. And then from here, all I do is I play who's missing. x times what gives me x squared, and it's x. And x times what gives me 3x, and it's 3. And x times 3 gives me 3x, and 3 times 3 really does give me 9. So this x squared plus 6x plus 9 is really x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. See? 6x. And this can be rewritten as, um, let me change colors so it makes it more obvious. Let's go back to blue. X plus 3 times X plus 3 is really the same as X squared plus 3X plus 3X plus 9, which is the same as X squared plus 6X plus 9. So there's my answer. X plus 3 and X plus 3. Okay, so what we did is we factored a quadratic polynomial. We took something that looked like x squared plus something plus something. We made it a rectangle. We transferred it to the box, and we factored. And the answer looks like x plus 3 times x plus 3. Or, an even fancier way of saying it is x plus 3 quantity squared. Now, where does the squared come from? Well, the fact that this and this are identical. They're exactly the same. Think twins. They look exactly the same. So there you go. That's how you factor. Um, let me give you a problem so that you guys can try this. Um, and I do suggest you try it. Um, uh, let's see. We can go with x, x squared plus 5x plus 6. So you try this one and um, imagine how the tiles go. Uh, some of my students don't have their tiles at home, so what they do is they just draw little boxes and rectangles, and it makes sense to them. So um, try this problem, use the box, and of course, check your answer.